Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Grand Arena Coliseum, where we are talking about the brand new Ewok fever going on in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes with the newest introduction, our queen and Ewok overlord, Princess Nisa. And CG was right. The Ewoks are definitely increasing in their meta rankings with a little bit more damage, more turn meter gains, and incredible durability. The Ewoks are better than ever before and actually a faction worth upgrading, especially since she required at relic seven for leia organa when we take a look at all the teams that sort of came into life this year in 2023 with zori captain rax phoenix and seer juna on the high end and then on the lower end you see things like saw Gerrera and the wookies i'd say right now with initial impressions the ewoks with the addition of princess nisa is somewhere smack dab in the middle there and i want to point out too this initial testing we're talking about today doesn't even talk about the chief chirp of omicron so i might be underselling this team a little bit but once we get into grand arena we also we see some people with territory omicrons on nisa the omicron on chief triple for grand arena i can see this team being a lot better than what we're seeing right now in its more vanilla form the notable things about princess nisa and what she's bringing is she is always assisting off ewok and she's basically hitting three times on her basic every single time and before we look at even the chief chirp omicron she's doing consistently about thirty thousand damage on her basic when she assists three times it's probably gonna be a lot more Chief Chirpa. She has damage ramping mechanism. She does true damage. She helps Ewoks apply damage over time when they're attacking out of turn. If we know something about Toskins, that's kind of a big deal. She makes the team so much more durable, giving them anti-daze, anti-stun protection up. 100% protection up, mind you, which makes the team very durable, more so than before. And of course, she has a cleanse capability and assist capability, and she can do a, a big terminator removal on her. Yep, no. There is a glaringly painful issue with this character that i think is kind of bad for the entirety of the game is that her animations take way too long as much as i maybe would like to use this team on offense seeing her take like what feels to be 10 seconds every time she's assisting takes away precious time when i'm trying to win a battle on offense but i guess on the bright side if they're gonna keep the animation this slow just put the ewoks on defense and hope they do decently well and let them drain your opponent's limited time that they have one of the biggest problems we have when building the Ewok team is who the heck do you kick out and who stays in? Obviously, Chief Chirpa is the best lead to run with the increased speed on the Omicron, but even before the Omicron, a lot of assisting, a lot of turn meter gains, so kind of a no-brainer. The last three slots are very difficult, and I think there's still some wiggle room to learn a little bit more. I found myself a little too attached to Ewok Elder. Ewok Elder, not so much for his cleanse and revives, which are nice. It's more so the turn turn meter he grants on the basic especially when i can get him to assist early on in the battle he gives me a push of turn meter and then my team starts rolling i feel like he might be too important to keep the turn meter train rolling other characters i liked a lot pop blue good old pop blue escobar his unique ability gives him 25 percent extra speed when he's not taunting he doesn't taunt at the beginning of the battle this is technically one of the possibly one of the fastest characters in terms of non-galactic legends in the game the third character i found myself frequently also using was low with his days turn meter removal buff dispels this team desperately needs more buff dispels because otherwise you're gonna get stuck behind things you don't want to be stuck behind and of course the tons of buffs he feeds through prophetic visions i found them also help him keep my turn meter train rolling and to control the enemy now oddly enough i found myself not using wicket as much as i thought i wanted to i first thought wicket was going to be a cornerstone of the team and he might be with more time given i just found that not to be as helpful as some of the other things which is a little weird and then of course i did did not have t-bow and ewok scout geared up now this could be one of those weird things like mon moth or pow is kind of a big cornerstone engine but when we look at some of the things that t-bow offers on ewok scramble tactic he gives a hundred percent turn meter to the team but there's also one more thing that we got to talk about when you're building your ewok team but i think there might be good reason to say that c3po possibly an okay thing to take away from commander luke and putting it on the ewok team because of nisa Truthfully, the most important thing is that cyborg relations apply expose on a basic. And when Nisa is always assisting pretty much three times every time she assists and she's getting exposes and she's got decent damage, it almost feels like you can turn one, turn two, just destroy someone on the enemy team right away if you can get going first. The cyborg relations unique ability is huge. It feels like this is the much needed damage I want to see 
see out of them. What we're seeing right now is with Nisa and the Chief Triple Lead, you got a lot of flex in those last three slots to put together a team that they have some element of a turn meter train, and when they lose a little momentum, they have ways to survive. And we're seeing so far before Chief Chirpa Omicron kicks in, or the Territory War Nisa Omicron kicks in, we're seeing that this team is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Commander Luke Skywalker. Now, granted, I want to point out, you are going to need some decent mods on this team. It isn't like Captain Rex, or Captain Rex was insanely gods here. I threw Captain Rex in a Phoenix crew with mods that I haven't really touched since 2017, and he made them basically amazing. You are going to need some good mods on the Ewok team still. You can't just walk in of whatever you have and expect Nisa to carry. She's not quite a Zori. She's not quite a Captain Rex or a Tusken Chieftain. But when she is in the team and you got some decent mods and you can get your turn meter flowing, she's constantly assisting, chipping away with that stick and stone damage, beating things like Commander Luke Skywalk, which is pretty interesting, pretty competitively up against a resistant Zori team. Ewoks are generally fast, especially that pop blue unique ability. When he gets 25% extra speed when he's not taunting, he gets the momentum moving. The downside is, is that this team, it still feels like death by a thousand cuts before that Omicron comes into play from Chief Turpa. But we're beating some other standard teams out there, and it's great to have these options when you're going up against Sana Staros, Admiral Radis, Dash Rendar. Typical teams you're likely to see on defense in Grand Arena, they're able to be used, and that's kind of a big deal before you pretty much use Ewoks for almost nothing of high value inside a Grand Arena. But now you could use them to be competitive with those B-level teams that you, you're going to see out there in the wilderness. But of course, this team doesn't have that almost invincible feeling that maybe Tuskens have, that maybe Phoenix and Zori have. And we see they'll have a little bit of a tougher time punching up a lot. I don't quite see them beating the, the Rivas, the General Skywalkers, the Darth Malguses out there, but pretty much below that, they're going to do some work. And then we also see they are kind of, since they're a turn meter heavy team, we see that they're susceptible to the usual counter since they have a high turn meter, a lot of buffs, attack out of turns. Trey is able to beat them. Tuskens are able to beat them. But when you sit there and evaluate the situation then for a moment, you got to realize, huh, those are some pretty top tier counters though. You know, Tuskens are kind of helpful to beat the, the Zori teams. Trey is kind of helpful for beating a lot of things out there. If this is indeed going to be a team which we'll have to wait and see next week in Grand Arena, if this is going to be a team that requires a Tuscan, a Trey, uh, top shelf level team, that takes away from other useful teams out there that you might need them for. So what I'm getting at is even before the Omicron, I have a weird suspicion that this team it might be annoying on defense to handle maybe like a back wall type of defense where you're down a few counters that's like oh boy what am i using here so long as this team can't be soloed by wampa and emphasis ness this is something i think we might see on defense but if you're being sold by wampa emphasis ness or imperial troopers can steamroll you we might not see defensive action so we're gonna wait for the metrics to show that but the good news is since this team has anti days with the tons of bonus protection and they get so much turn meter wampa may might have some sort of hard time soloing because she might not get enough turns in. When Ewoks are taking 20, 30 turns to Wampa's one, it might take a little too long from the ramp up, especially with the slow animations. And Fist Ness with the, with the anti-daze and stun protection, she as well might be in a similar situation like Wampa. But again, we gotta wait and see if they're gonna fall victim to that. One thing I wanna point out that I absolutely love about this team, a lot of teams nowadays, and new characters specifically require two, three Zetas, and an Omicron. The great thing is what you're seeing today, realistically, is a one Zeta team. Chief Triple lead, and that's all you really need to get sort of what you're seeing here today before Omicron. Now, I did throw a Zeta on Yub Dub. I don't think it's needed at all. So let's talk about the needed Zetas. It's kind of a pretty short list here. I think at the minimum, which a lot of you guys probably already have it locked in, you likely want to have that Chief Chirpa Zeta lead. And then if you want to take it a step further, which I will let you guys know later if it's 100% worth it, but that Chief Chirpa Omicron is going to be very nice too to give the extra speed, extra attacks on a turn, and extra damage. Truthfully, at that point, I think everything else is mostly a luxury type of Zeta. Yubnub on Princess Nisa removes 100% Terminator, which isn't bad. She's going to get a lot of turns, and if you see that someone on the other side is about to take a turn, you can try to yank their turn meter away, and you're in a good spot. So Yubnub's all right, but it's not necessary. Unlike a lot of other teams, you kind of need a few Zetas. This is kind of a one Zeta team right now, and that's kind of good that we're seeing this level of performance with only one Zeta. Keep in mind, pretty good bang for buck value. Regarding mods on Princess Nisa, uh, the damage right now isn't the most impressive thing, but when you consider she's attacking three times in a row, you know it's about 30,000 per assist before the Omicron kicks on a Chief Trooper and before her unique ability starts ramping up. Remember, Ewoks now, they're going to have a little bit of offense ramping. They get 5% offense whenever they're being critically hit, and it's stacking throughout the battle. So when you're going up against Dash Rendars, Iden Versios, or 
critically hitting you a lot. They're getting a lot of turns in Commander Luke Skywalker. This eventually could jack up before Omicron to like 20,000 per hit. And that's like 60,000 per assist. And that's not bad at all. So for right now, I would probably recommend a critical chance, critical damage set, full on offense. She's got a good base speed, so she might get fast anyways. Right now, it seems like either a critical damage or offense set with a crit chance. That seems to be a pretty decent way to go. So overall, this is definitely a great addition for the Ewoks, but I don't think it's quite a Zori, a Captain Rex, a Tusken Chieftain type of lifter. She's adding just enough to make them usable, make them survive with the increasing defense, the protection up, anti-daze, anti-stuns, and with her constantly assisting, helping out with the damage, and especially damage over time, crippling the enemy, it's a good addition. In the framework of Ewoks, and looking at how she helps out the team, this is easily a 3 out of 5 star character. And again, one more time, I want to remind you guys that we might be underselling a little bit. We gotta wait for Grand Arena, see some Omicrons turned down for Cheap Chirpa and her Territory War Omicron. This is the team that definitely has the potential to go even higher than what we're seeing at the base level performance with really a single Zeta. Thank you all so much for watching today. Princess Nisa and the Ewoks are going wild right now. Just like all you wild party animals. Leave that like, comment down below, and all your thoughts. Be sure to subscribe so you're not missing a thing. And always remember how it's great to be in the Empire today. The sun never sets. We dominate. We're strong.